Okay, folks. Uh, today we're taking a look at the idea of solving trade equations. Uh, in this section, or actually in these two sections, to solve a trick equation, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding uh, angles that satisfy the equation, right? So remember that we're always going to be solving for angles. Now, I know that you can find angles. The answer could be in degrees. The answer could be in radians, right? But in this class, we will be finding the angles only in radians. So when we solve this, we'll always be solving for radians. Now, let's mix in the idea of graphing with solving. Suppose I start with the function y equals sine of x, right? Well, this is the graph of y equals sine of x. Yeah, I, I hope you remember this from our graphing days. Well, suppose I have this equation and I say, okay, instead of a y, what if I replace this y with a one-half, right? What does it say? Where does y, or where does sine of x equal one-half? Well, what I'd be looking for on this would be all the places on here where we where the, the, the value of one half on the y axis or on the y is uh, crossing my graph. So I go up one point one uh, the uh, point one point two point three point four point five is right here. So right here, where is, is where it's one half. So where does that happen? Well it happens right here, it happens right here, it happens right here, and it happens right here. So what are these angles? Well, I know that the answer to this, sine of x equals a half, will actually have to be, well, this angle right here. Well, this angle, if you think about it, is the quadrant one angle, right? Well, what angle the first quadrant has is sine of a half? That's right, it's pi over six, right? Well, what angle would be right here? Right here? Well, wouldn't that be a second quadrant answer, right? And it makes sense. Why would quadrants 1 and quadrants 2 make sense for this equation? Well, if you think about it, aren't I finding the sine of some angle and it's producing a positive 1 half? Well, again, what quadrants, what angles and what quadrants does sine produce positive fractions for? The first and the second, and that's why that's happening, right? So I know x equals pi over 6 would be an answer. In the second quadrant, that angle, pi, uh, pi over 6, would become 5 pi over 6, right? And again, all I did was use this reference angle and put it in the second quadrant. Okay. But then it also happens right here. It happens right here. What's that value of x that produces that value of one half for the sine? Well, if you think about it, wouldn't that just be the coterminal angle to pi over 6, right? And how do you create coterminal angles? You add a 2 pi. Well, gosh, here's that 2 pi right there. So 2 pi plus pi over 6 is... 13 pi over 6, right? Well, and then another answer would be, well, again, the coterminal angle for this guy would be right here. So to find that value, I just add pi over 6, or I say uh, 2 pi to 5 pi over 6. And if you do that, uh, I believe you'd get 17 pi over 6. Right? So wouldn't, aren't these the four answers to this graph, uh, from this graph that it would come up to, that would solve this equation? But the reality is, guys, doesn't this graph go on forever? Doesn't it keep going up and down and up and down forever? And don't you just create these answers, right? Wouldn't you just create these answers by adding two pi's or the coterminal version, right? So does it make sense that in general, <coughs> the solution to this equation, or we call them the general solutions, would be my first quadrant answer, pi over 6, plus all of their coterminal angles. How do you create a coterminal angle? We added 2 pi. Now, how many coterminal angles do we want to add? As many as we want. So I call it n, 2 pi n. So this stands for how many full uh, uh, coterminal angles we want to create. Positive or negative, right? <coughs> I also would have a second quadrant answer, which was 5 pi over 6, right? But again, there's an infinite amount of those coterminal angles that would satisfy that condition. So it would be 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, right? So the solution to this equation from the graph is pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, this guy, plus all his coterminals. And 5 pi over 
or six, this guy, plus all his coterminal lines, right? Okay? Now, of course, we don't want to have to graph this every time. So really, what we want to be able to do is use our charts um, to solve, right? So let's take a look at an example of how we can use this, right? In this example, I'm going to solve for x, okay? Suppose I give you uh, 2 cosine of x plus the square root of 3 equals 0. Now, guys, don't lose sight of this. I'm still solving equations like I've always done them, whether it be in Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 or trigonometry. Since I've only got a single x here, can't I sad map this equation to get x alone? In other words, can't I just move the, the items away from x using the opposite of the order of operations? So the first thing I want to do is I want to subtract the square root of 3. So when I do that, I get 2 cosine of x equals negative square root of 3, right? Then I would divide both sides by 2, so I get cosine of x equals negative square root of 3 over 2. At this point, to get x alone, I know I want to do the inverse, right? And at this point, this is where an equation differs from an expression. Folks, so, since I have an equation, I have to find all the values for x at work, right? So those silly little rules that I told you about expressions will be out the window here. Now you just have to look at it like this. I see a negative fraction. What quadrants does cosine produce negative fractions in? Quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. All right? Now I have to find the angles in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3 that would produce a cosine of radical 3 over 2. Well, looking at your chart, right? I know that the cosine of uh, uh, radical 3 over 2, that happens when you have pi over 6, agreed? So I need to take pi over 6 and put it into the second quadrant. Well, when you do pi over 6 in the second quadrant, didn't my shortcut say to subtract one from the denominator, create the numerator? So the second quadrant angle will be 5 pi over 6. But then again, don't I have to add all the coterminal angles that would be associated with that angle, right? Likewise, for the third quadrant, to create the third quadrant version of pi over 6, the shortcut was to subtract one, or to add one to the numerator, a denominator to create the numerator. So 6 plus 1 would be 7 pi over 6. So that's the quadrant 3 version of pi over 6 plus 2 pi m. All right? And that's how we solve a trig equation. Let's do it one more time. In the last example, if I've got a problem that looks like this, if I've got 4 cosine squared of x minus 2 equals 0. And I want to solve this for x. Again, there's a single x here, so I know you said mappable. Does it make sense for you to add the 2 across? So get 4 cosine squared of x equals 2. I would divide by 4 and get a half. I then would square root both sides to get rid of the squared. So I get cosine of x equals, well, square root of 1 is 1, and square root of 2 is square root of 2, right? But wait a minute, I know what you're saying, get in home. Who put that square root of the problem? We did. So don't we have to make this plus and minus? Moreover, don't I need to rationalize this into plus and minus square root of 2 over 2, right? So I've got the cosine of x equals positive and negative square root of 2 over 2. Well, that's two different equations. Cosine of x could equal positive square root of 2 over 2, and cosine of x could equal negative square root of 2 over 2, correct? Now I need to solve each of these equations individually. To do this, I say x equals the cosine inverse of square root of 2 over 2, and I say, okay, that's a positive fraction. What quadrants does cosine produce positive fractions in? The first and the fourth. And now I find the related reference angle for my chart. If you look, that becomes pi over 4. How do I put pi over 4 into the fourth quadrant? Well, I think I told you to double the bottom and subtract 1, so that one becomes 7 pi over 4, right? Now, that's for 1, that's inside of just the first, uh, the, the, the first time around the, the unit circle. So I have to add 2 pi n each time to get the general solutions, right? Coming over to the second version, 
I would get x equals cosine of inverse of negative root 2 over 2. Well, where does cosine produce negative fractions? In quadrants 3 and quadrants 4. Now again, I know that the reference angle for, for cosine of root 2 over 2 is still pi over 4. But now I've got to put it in the third quadrant. How do I do that? I'm a bad boy. I'm wrong. It's not quadrants 3 and 4. It's quadrants 2 and 3. Sorry about that. Well, how do I take pi over 4 and put that into the second quadrant? Again, you subtract 1 from the denominator to get the numerator. How do I get uh, pi over 4 into the third quadrant? You add 1, so 5 pi over 4. And then you create the general solution by adding 2 pi n. Add 2 pi n. So this guy has actually four answers, one in each quadrant. And if you think about it, the reason why that happened is when I square rooted both sides, that created a positive and a negative, which forced that to happen. Okay? Hey, guys, we'll talk about this more tomorrow. Bye now.